Thanks for using Dream Tech Splines. Now that we know how splines work and how we can create and edit them, it's time to put them into use. Dream Tech Splines generally consists of two parts. The spline computer, which we already covered, this is the object that holds the spline information, and the spline users, a set of components made to work with the spline computer in order to produce all sorts of results. Following splines, mesh generation, particle controlling, all this is done through the spline users. I'm Mitko and in this video we'll learn how to utilize splines with the spline user components. As the name suggests, a spline user is a component that uses a spline. You can find these components in the Add Component menu under Dream Tech, Splines and Users. I'm going to add a spline renderer component to our spline so that we can visualize it during runtime. When adding a spline user to an object with a spline computer, it automatically gets the spline reference from the object. If I were to add it to a different object, I will have to manually set the spline property. When the spline renderer is added, it creates two other components, which is the mesh filter and the mesh renderer. And the mesh filter holds the generated mesh. If we double click it, we can see the same mesh here. But this mesh does not exist in the project, so keep that in mind. It's only in the scene. Now let's change the material of the mesh renderer to something more appropriate. For example, the dash material from the examples folder. And then I'm going to have to set the UV scale to something different, like for example, 12 along Y. And yeah, here we have a basic spline renderer setup that you can see. And if I take the camera, move it to the point of the camera in the editor, and then go to the game view, we can see the spline rendering in the game view. And since we're working with a material which is mostly white, I think it's a good idea to go into the editor properties here in the spline computer and change the color in the scene to black or something else, but I'm going to use black just for convenience so that we can see the spline throughout the entire length of the spline renderer. Okay, so all spline users share a bunch of base properties. The first thing that I'm going to show is the clip range. Expand the user configuration foldout and you will see a min-max slider here. This slider defines the range of the spline that the spline user works on. So if I try to make it smaller, then we only operate on a smaller portion of the spline. If you need more precision when setting up the clip range, you can click this little arrow button on the left of the clip range slider. And this is going to give you two handles in the scene view, which you can then select and drag in order to get the desired clip range. Now moving on, similar to the spline computer, we also have the update method which can be either update, fixed update, or late update. We can also use multi-threading for the given spline user logic. Keep in mind, this is only going to work in runtime. And now onto the properties that are specific for this component. The spline renderer is part of a subset of spline users called the mesh generators. The mesh generators have this vertex foldout, which holds some values for mesh generation. For example, we can set the size, color, or offset of the generated mesh. These values apply to the entire generated mesh, but if I want to affect the mesh only in a given region, what I can do is go into the splines edit mode, select a point or two, and set their properties, like for example the color or the size, and this way you can get a regional change. You can achieve a similar effect by using the sample modifiers here at the bottom, but we'll get to them in another video. Oh, and keep in mind that in order to see mesh colors, you need to be using a shader which supports vertex colors, such as the one in the dash material. So for example, if I switch the material to something else, like for example, this one, I won't see the colors at all. And a single spline can be used by as many spline users as you want. So now we can create another object and make it traverse the same spline back and forth. I'm going to now create a cube and assign the spline follower component to it. Now in this case, because the spline follower is attached to a separate object, I need to manually link the spline computer component. And as soon as I did that, you can see that the cube snapped to the beginning of the spline. From here, I can set a bunch of properties, like for example, the start position, follow speed, which is really important, and the wrap mode, which I'm going to set to ping pong so that we can have the cube go back and forth as soon as it reaches the spline's ends. Now let's test it out in runtime. It works! And I mean, it's supposed to work. <laughs> I don't know why I sounded so surprised. Now let's set up the spline renderer to better visualize the spline so that we can better see what happens in runtime. And now I'm going to copy the clip range of the spline renderer over to the spline follower. 
Now the spline follower is going to traverse the exact same portion of the spline that the spline renderer occupies. Let's bump up the speed a little bit. And so this was the short introduction to spline users. In the next video we'll go deeper into mesh generation using other spline user components and take a look at some very interesting tools. Thank you for watching and on an unrelated note, if you own an Apple device, we recently released our game Lifeslide on Apple Arcade and it would mean a lot to us if you gave it a shot. It's made using DreamText Splines and our Endless Runner plugin forever, so you can see those two in action. First month of Apple Arcade is free and you can unsubscribe at any time.